Hi there, welcome to Secret Spill. Their request for us to do something made us think, this isn't going to work. We had a conversation with them and managed to convince them that four powerful black women and two buffoonish black men just don't mix. It gets even more bizarre when you realize that his reaction was considerably more composed than John's. Remarked, oh, I discussed all sorts of things. I was just mad about it. It was just us. Our idea. And while the male cast members had their fair share of problems, the female cast members also had certain obstacles. Six friends, all in their vivacious twenties, are living together in a bustling city, navigating relationship drama, job struggles and wild hijinks. I didn't fit in with their larger female counterparts, and I didn't think they understood what to do with me. Has anyone seen the popular sitcom Living Single, Goes to Satan's Helpers? If you guessed it's not about friends, you'd be right. However, I must warn you that Satan is well aware of my current obsession with sitcoms, especially the classic ones from yesteryear. It's safe to say that these shows haven't held up very well over the years and that they weren't exactly groundbreaking when they first aired. I can think of a few others, like Living Single, that you might be thinking of right now, but you might be surprised to hear that most of those other shows are probably based on Drew. Inspiration from Living Single the late 90s show that helped pave the way for later, even more popular shows like Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and Big Bang Theory, Living Single was king when these shows were just starting out or were in the early stages of their. It was practically impossible for anyone who was a huge fan of 90s television not to notice, as writers had just begun using typewriters for work. However, reaching this level of fame wasn't easy, and living single was noticeable even to those who didn't like it due to their personally biased towards the show was its unconventionality. It was written in a way that encouraged young people to be more honest about their decisions in life and also challenged long-held stereotypes about black people. After all, who would have guessed that a show about a bunch of kids sharing an apartment building would be an integral part of the show's lasting impact on the entertainment industry? Even after all these years, Occasionally, clips from the show still dominate social media. For example, just recently, the series finale of Al went viral on TikTok with nearly 3 million views after fans found out that Khadija whispered a second line after her actual line clips. The title sequence and theme song from the show are still making the rounds on the internet. The scene where the four ladies sing in the bathroom using brushes and toilet bowl cleaners as microphones is also popular. Whenever someone acts too posh or too whimsical, there are gifts of Ren posted or Sinclair. Living Single, created by A.E.T. LeBowser, debuted on Fox in 1993 with an all-black cast of roommates living in Brooklyn, New York. It was an instant and unexpected hit, according to Entertainment Tonight, and the show has become a classic sitcom thanks to the characters' innocent traits. I know I've already mentioned the show's portrayal of black people, but it bears repeating. To put it in perspective, the show's characters worked as stockbrokers, attorneys, and magazine editors, none of whom were represented by people of color during that time. Throughout the show, black characters were portrayed positively, and the cast was aware of the influence their roles had. In an interview with Blavity Inc., Erica Alexander emphasized the significance of representation, saying, Representation matters. She went on to say, People in positions of power, like politicians or lawyers, have come up to me and said that they saw black characters on the show and felt compelled to take action. Everyone, from Max and Kyle to Khadija, imagined themselves in those roles. That's not to say there weren't any obstacles. In fact, they did a great job of shaping the show's direction by making tweaks based on our interactions. Before things began to change. The characters, on the other hand, were real and entertaining, and the show was a lot of fun to watch. Despite the serious consideration of racial issues, the characters weren't exactly slammed with the stereotypical struggles that black characters on TV often face. In an interview with Entertainment Tonight, Kim Coos stated that, beyond the show's groundbreaking level of representation, black people in their communities are accurately portrayed. The show featured a brother working on Wall Street with his hair in a loose bun and a woman starting her own magazine, both of which were incredibly powerful.
NBC revived the living single formula for sitcoms after a year of success, thanks in large part to the show's entertaining portrayal of the characters and their antics, which often involve escorting a princess or competing to break a news story before another publication. Friends in New York City premiered in 1994, yet it was later surrounded by controversy. It was too similar to the original. It pitted six white New Yorkers against six black New Yorkers, and many would claim it was the most inventive program ever. Our world doesn't provide us with that kind of love, but that hasn't diminished the chemistry between our characters on the show. It's not just a title, it's a spirit, it's a thing for us, says Lee Bowser, creator of the show, in an interview with Today.com. Queen Latifah, Kim Fields, John Henton, Erica Alexander, T.C. Carson, Maxine Overton, and Rain Zellweger were all featured in the show, which she describes as a moment, a movement, and an energy that we carry with us as a group, which is truly lovely. Similarly, they were both working professionals navigating the ups and downs of their young adult lives in Brooklyn. Off screen, Queen Latifah's necklaces were a constant feature from the show's early days and continued to play a significant role in many of her subsequent appearances. The actress's necklace, which appeared to be a fashion accessory, actually stemmed from a place of profound anguish. The key belonged to a motorcycle that she had bought for her brother, who tragically died in an accident involving the two-wheeled vehicle. She kept the details of the tragedy a secret for a long time. After my brother's death devastated my life and shook me to my core, she eventually spoke about it in an episode of Untold Stories of Hip Hop. I was meant to be with him that day on the motorbike, but one of our friends had to relocate, so we were moving all day. Queen Latifah's career started in the early 90s with her album All Hail the Queen, which featured her hit single Ladies First. In the same year that she landed Living Single, Latifah also won a Grammy for her. Before she became famous as a successful magazine founder in NYC, she was known for her musical talent. Unity was her first leading film role, and she co-starred with Jada Pinkett Smith in the critically acclaimed 1,996 film Set It Off. In 2002, Latifah was even more famous after her iconic performance in Chicago, for which she received an Oscar nomination for Best Supporting Actress. Since then, she has released her own. Unlike Queen Atifa, who is supposed to star in the upcoming CBS crime drama reboot of The Equalizer, daytime talk show host Queen Latifah won an Emmy for Outstanding Television Movie for her portrayal of blues singer Bessie Smith in the film Bessie A. Latifah has also starred in films like Girls Trip and Hustle, as well as Fox's musical drama star. Kim Cole was originally cast as Simone Jackson's character Sinclair, but she was brought on board due to some last-minute changes. This doesn't mean she didn't fit the part perfectly. In fact, we couldn't think of anyone else who would have been a better fit. Moy Love, as she is more commonly known, was Queen Latifah's best friend at the time. The connection between the two is clear. For reasons that have been left unsaid, Jackson turned down the role, and it fell to Coles. Cole snatched it up, in part because her catchphrase is, Woo Woo wasn't just a hit with viewers, it became a national trend in the 90s, solidifying her place in pop culture. By the time she landed the role of Queen Latifah's cousin on the show, Kim Cole had already found success as a member of the sketch's original cast. After landing the role of the hilarious Sinclair on Living Single thanks to the success of the comedy series in Living Color, Coles continued to make appearances on shows like Six Feet Under, My Wife and Kids, and even had a recurring role on Gina Davis's show. This solidified her place in pop culture. In 2000, Coles hosted BET's game show Pay It Off and was a part of TBS's Comedy 10 Items or Less. She continues to act and make guest star appearances on television, receiving major award nominations for a few of them. As for her personal life, Kim Cole has been married twice. She first wed to... While it's clear that the show wouldn't have been the same without Sinclair, many also feel the same way about Maxine as a high-profile attorney. She was married to Aeon Edwards from 1985 to 1995 and later to Reggie McIver a former SWAT police officer in the Dominican Republic, from 2015 to 2019. One would have thought that with her previous role as Pam Tucker on The Cosby Show, 
Erica Alexander, who plays the on-screen day, would bring much-needed order to their already comically chaotic arrangement. However, that was far from the case. Co-starring with Whoopi Goldberg in the 1990 film The Long Walk Home, the actress continued her TV career after five years as Maxine on Living Single, appearing in recurring parts on multiple shows and making guest appearances on Grey's Anatomy and Queen Sugar. She also took on the role of Cousin Pam in the sitcom. Among her many acting credits are Test Shoemaker in the freeform science fiction drama Beyond Alexander, a starring role in the critically acclaimed 2017 film Get Out, and a starring role in the second season of Bosch on Amazon Prime. In addition to her prominent roles, she has been busy with her podcast, Finding Tama, which focuses on the increasing number of missing people. Her personal life has remained mostly private. The celebrity is said to be working on documentaries about notable black community members when she's not promoting her podcast, so it's clear she's not merely fighting for the rights of young black girls who she believes are not receiving assistance from the police. While the cameras aren't rolling, she's still doing it. Some people have spent their entire lives in front of the camera. This is one thing that sets Regine Hunter apart. Warner Cole, hey, would you like some coffee? Oh, we're out. I uh... In Regina's parallel universe, Kim Fields' mother Chip was a famous singer, actress, and TV director years before she landed the part of socialite wannabe Regin Hunter Fields. Kim gained fame playing Dorothy DeRamsey on The Facts of Life. Her career took off after she lived. Despite the cancellation of her single, Fields continued her foray into reality television by directing a few films by Tyler Perry and BET's Let's Stay Together in 2015. Fields joined the cast of The Real Housewives of Atlanta for one season. But her foray into reality television didn't end there. In 2016, she competed in Dancing with the Stars' 22N season. As I indicated before, Regina's story is different from everyone else's. John Henton's character, Overton Obi Wakefield, exemplifies this contrast. Obi shot to fame through sheer luck. Sinclair's on-screen boyfriend, Wanda Sykes, co-starred with him on the Netflix comedy series The Upshaws. His career took off after living single. The actor co-starred on a BC's The Hughes with D.L. Huey, and in 2000 he was in a terrible car accident that fractured both legs, nine teeth, and shattered bones. He was discovered in 1991 by an executive for Johnny Carson's The Tonight Show. Henton continued working on the show after undergoing extensive reconstructive plastic surgery to repair one of his eye sockets. Henton has since made a handful of guest appearances in 2009 and 2014, but he appears to be actively avoiding television these days. The only places you can find him performing stand-up comedy since he stopped on the show are comedy club stages. Throughout his television appearances, it has been evident that every cast member has faced a significant setback during their time on the show.